part of the thing about transitioning careers and knowing nothing coming in here, but you know, having mm -hmm. the right attitude and the values of being successful. And one of those things that we preach here is discipline. It's one of our core values mm -hmm. as a company. And I think that particular core value resonates with me the most. And I think I got that from you. So what I want to ask you, what, <laughs> you look shocked yeah. getting up every morning, growing up as a kid, hearing you on that treadmill oh, every still single to this day. day. I still mean, do. every day. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of The Perks and Paving. Today, we have a very, very special episode for you. We have my mother, Janie, in studio mm -hmm. live here in one studio. Welcome, Mom. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you, you drove very far to get here. Yes. Oh. From Tampa. Yeah. So it's, it's over 1,000 miles, about 1,000 some odd miles. Yes. It's, it's a trip. Yeah, that's a, a long one for you. You yes. made a pit stop, though, correct? We stopped in Charlotte, spent the night Very nice. in the less attractive area of Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. And then got up at five, 4 o'clock this morning and left at 5. So we All could to get, get here. here in time for the podcast. Just so we could be here for the podcast. So it's, it's your second time visiting Pittsburgh. I thought you were going to say second time on a uh, podcast. No. <laughs> I was like, no. wait. No, 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 no. No? It's oh, that's not true. No. You came up since we've been in our house. Two, yeah, since this been is in our second time house. since we oh, bought so the, the second new time house. Since your house. I think it's our fourth trip up, up right. here. Yeah. But it's your first trip to the Payment Group headquarters. Yes. Yes. And what are your initial yeah, thoughts with your tour? I, I think it's a really uh, um, impressive layout that you have here. Beautiful uh, venue. Uh, the building is... Very nice. The offices. Can I come? Yeah, right. <laughs> <I'll> stay here. <laughs> Is it what you thought it would be? I had like, no what idea. were you expecting? I thought it would be something more uh, rough. Yeah. You know, with construction. Yeah. That it wouldn't be quite this nice. nice. <laughs> yeah. Sure. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And you know, so leading in now that you're here mm -hmm. and you're in studio, you're here at our our corporate headquarters. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to talk about the conversation that we had whenever I told you where I was as a physical therapist mm -hmm. and what that phone call was like from your perspective. And I'll share kind of what was going through my mind, but, um, what were your thoughts whenever I made that call and initially told you how I was feeling in that industry and where I was personally and the idea of me leaving the field and coming here, what kind of share what went through your mind? Well, I think, you know, as, as a mother or as a parent, uh, we saw you go through uh, a pretty rigorous education mm -hmm. to get to your DPT, you know, degree, and the, um, I'll never forget you uh, studying and preparing for the boards. And I think the first impression is, whoa, wait a minute, you know, are, are, have you thought this through? Mm -hmm. You know, I think, though, as I as I as I have aged. You know, it, it becomes more and more apparent to me that, that you should be happy. And to me, there's nothing more miserable in life than having to get up to and go to a job that you hate. That That's awful. And I think we've all had jobs like that where you just go, oh, I really don't want to do this. But, you know, you got to because you got to eat, you got to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. So you do it. But I think that if you can find something that really makes you happy, that you are happy when you wake up and I can hardly wait to get to the office and do this job, then that's worth a lot. And the only thing that I asked of you was that you maintain your license mm -hmm. because this is a very uncertain world. Sure. You never know what's going to happen. And I think that uh, you, know, you should always have a backup plan, which... To me, in physical therapy, you would always have a very good backup plan. And the same for Paige. For sure. I'm sure your mom and dad went through the same thing. When yeah. they think of the money that was spent, mm -hmm. the time, yeah. you know, edu in, edu in, in, in the classroom and, mm -hmm. and whatever, and then getting that degree and whatever. Yeah. I mean, that was the challenge. Yeah. That was a challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is a different challenge. Mm -hmm. You for know, sure. there are a lot of challenges in life. For sure. But I think that you have to, you know... Uh, if this is what makes you happy, then yeah. fine. And this is a great time in your life to do something like this because you have no children. Right. You know, I think I mean, things would have looked a lot it, different it, it, had we been it, at a different yep. stage of our lives. I think about that all the time. Yes. Like, 
as much as, you know, I'm sure there's um, positives of, you know, having kids early. I, I don't think that our lives would look the way that we did had we done things that way. And obviously, it's hard to say. Maybe we would have, the, the kids would have been older. I mean, it's hard mm -hmm. to say for certain, but. Um, had we bought had, that house in had, Sunrise? Had we, we bought the there? house in Sunrise, had, you know, we had kids right after we got married, I think, you know, making that career jump would have been a lot different. Because yeah. how, how do you, how? Like, I mean, it, there just would have been a lot more, um, you know, unknowns at that well, point. Well, a lot more unknowns. I mean, but at that point, when you have kids, you're really looking for security. Right. Because you've got to provide. Right. I mean, know? I think at the point when he made the jump, I had been here for mm -hmm. almost a year. But, I mean, did you think I was crazy for for making no, the jump? No, not really. Well, I that's mean, nice of you. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> anymore, nothing surprises me. Yeah. You know, and I just thought... Uh, it, you know, it kind of, it made me stop for a minute. I mean, I'm yeah. sure your mom and dad stopped for a minute and yeah. thought about it and said, whoa, you know, what's going on here? Especially I, when it's such a, drastic. I mean, it's such a drastic <laughs> move, a yeah. drastic change from what you were doing. Yeah. But I know that Mark, uh, when you moved up here, you re never really were happy. Yeah. You, you did, you were not happy. Yeah. The, the career. I think you were happier as a physical therapist down in Davie, yeah. well, Fort I, Lauderdale. I, yeah. I mean, you know, but I mean, not that you were miserable, but you know, that, that new office that was opened and they brought it you in. It was exciting to you. And you, you know, you, you had no patience and I mean, it was you were traveling around here and there just basically fill time right. and help. And I said, uh, I don't think you're happy. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, that's why I wasn't so surprised because I just didn't think that you were all that happy. Yeah. yeah. And you know, part of the thing about transitioning careers and knowing nothing coming in here, but, you know, having mm -hmm. the right attitude and the values of being successful. And one of those things that we preach here is discipline. It's one of our core values mm -hmm. as a company. And I think that particular core value resonates with me the most. And I think I got that from you. So what I want to ask you, <laughs> what, you look shocked. Yeah. Getting up every morning, growing up as a kid, hearing you on that treadmill oh, yeah. every still single to day. day. I mean, still do. every for day. For those that don't know, my mother in law gets up in the morning and bikes or swims or walks mm -hmm. or lifts. I mean, every day. I mean, a couple years ago, we swam in the pool on Christmas Day. And what we swam a mile. A mile. A mile. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can swim a mile. I've never. Yeah, she did. I, we, <laughs> yeah, I did. But I, I mean, Mark was like, she's going to beat your butt. <laughs> I was like, oh, she probably will. But yeah. uh, I mean, you are very disciplined in that regard. Yes. As but I mean, in, 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 yeah. So whether it was exercising or how we sat at the dinner table yeah, every single say. night after dinner, cleaning the dishes and going through homework. I mean, oh, yeah. it's a very prominent theme in my life. And I want to know what, how, where was that for you? Where did you learn that? Who, I, who was that for you? my mother and mm -hmm. father. I mean, it, it, these are, values that you pass. There are values. You know, it's values that you pass on to each generation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's sadly missing because parents today are not passing on really good values to their children. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have a generation, you've already seen some of this upcoming generation, what they're like. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it's important. You know, you have to, um, my parents taught me to be the best that I could be in doing whatever I wanted to do. And you do that by being very disciplined and, you know, in, in your case, in going to school, making sure that both you and your brother were well prepared, you know, that uh, you didn't go in with, uh, you know, come out with C's and D's and whatever, you know, just because you're, I, 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 I've always felt that you and your brother were very smart. You're smart guys. And both if there's anything smart. I don't like to see, it's wasted, wasted intelligence, wasted talent. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, I love to hear when he tells the stories of you guys sitting at the kitchen oh, table yeah. and yeah. reading and you, you know, going through stuff with them. Because my mom did the same thing. Absolutely. And, um, and, and it's funny. I, n not that um, I think, I mean, you had a lot of siblings, too. So, I mean, I, I'm curious to ask my mom the same question. If my grandma did the same thing for my mom or if it was like in another aspect of life I've never I've never asked we'll have to get her on the podcast <laughs> but um but yeah it's it's interesting to me that we grew up in a very similar um you know yeah. home life setting as far as no. discipline kind of and the compatibility yeah. between us yeah. for like with the similar backgrounds and something yeah. like that absolutely yeah it's 
Um, I think that um, if you look at kids today, you know, they can't read, mm -hmm. their math scores are horrible. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? They're not more, they're not dumber than, you, than anybody else. It's just why, and it's just because they don't have the home influence mm -hmm. that helps to make them successful. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think you began to see this because my mother didn't, my mother taught, but she didn't go back to work until my youngest sister was well into grade school, okay? And uh, I always tell people, and right or wrong, I said, you know, if you're gonna have kids, they become primary, mm -hmm. not secondary. They are primary in your life, and you have to make sure that you prepare them mm -hmm. and that you teach them and that you pass on values For to sure. them. And, I mean, I understand people have to eat, they have to pay rent or pay the mortgage, and so now you have two people working in a household, mm -hmm. and they, you, you can't, in my mind, you can't do both equally. It just doesn't work, mm -hmm. you know. And I gave up a teaching career. Well, that's what I was going to ask you yes. next. Can you tell us a little bit about your career and what you Well, did? when I graduated from college, I wanted uh, to travel. I love to travel. <laughs> yeah, and, you can. Um, <laughs> You're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I always liked foreign languages. I loved to travel. And my parents didn't have a lot of money. And I wanted to study overseas because my major was French. And I wanted to go to France and stay for a year and study. I mean, there was no way because my parents couldn't begin to afford it. And I certainly had no money. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought, well, when I graduated from college, I also got a degree in education, secondary education. My parents were of a generation that and I was of a generation that, you know, women were teachers mm -hmm. or nurses, you know, but not doctors and lawyers and whatever. And I think looking back on that time, it, it wasn't that you couldn't do it, but it was just so much harder to do it. Mm -hmm. And I never, I had never met a woman doctor. I'd never met a woman doctor till much later in my life. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so I thought to myself, well, how am I going to travel? How am I going to do this? And at that time, there was a, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Peace Corps, which sent you all over the world into third world countries, you know, to teach English or to teach medicine or to teach, I mean, it was uh, to, to build this or build that or whatever. It was, you know, you went into a community and you helped, whether it was teaching, nursing, building, whatever. And... I was sent to Morocco, which was, a, well, it's Arab, but I mean, it was occupied by France, so it was a French-speaking country, too. And that's kind of what where it started. And, you know, after that, I mean, I just, during that year that I was there in Morocco, I did a lot of traveling because the students were on strike in the high school. So I traveled. I traveled to Europe three times, you know, during their striking, I was traveling. <laughs> And when I came back, it was, uh, now what do I do? You know, now what do I do? And my father helped me get a job on the Navajo Reservation teaching. And I did that for a couple of years, but it, I hated it. Talk about waking up in the morning and saying, I don't want to do this. I did that for two years. And I said, I, I got to get out of here. So I applied for graduate school because to me that made the most sense. While I was in the Peace Corps, I had had teaching experience, teaching English, teaching language to non-English speakers. And so um, I applied. At that time, um, there was one school in the country um, that offered the degree that I was looking for, and that was in Illinois, Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. So I got a fellowship. I went. I studied. I met my husband. He was my teacher. <laughs> And one semester, he was the only teacher I had. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, I mean, he was the only teacher I had for like four classes. Uh, so um, we became friends. I mean, Kyle and I, and, and Kyle was with the other graduate students. He was our, he was in our group, our mm -hmm. age group. Others were much older. He was young, you know. So we we socialized a lot or whatever. So then, what do you do after graduate school? Do I want a doctorate? Uh, well, not really, you know. Uh, I was never a great, I, I never really enjoyed teaching. It was, 
my career, my, my teaching career was uh, a way to do the things that I really, really wanted to do. So uh, I was offered a position in Poland to open an exchange program between the university, Southern Illinois University, and this technical university in Poland. So I went. Um, we kind of set it up. I mean, it was behind the Iron Curtain. It was well before uh, Lech Wałęsa, and I mean, Poland was still a very communist country. Uh, and very, I always tell people, I'll say, if you think communism is so wonderful or socialism is so great, go and live in one of these countries for a year, and then come back and tell me how great it is. Mm -hmm. So when we got back, then Kyle and I got married, and um, I worked at the Language Center in Carbondale off and on. Um, we, were, we were really destitute. I mean, we had no money. And um, a couple years later, I was pregnant with Mark, and, you know, I said, this is crazy. I said, we can't, we can't, we don't have any money to do anything, you know, it's all we can do to pay, get food on the table or whatever. So I did go back to work. But my teaching at, at the university was, you know, it was like three hours a day or something, so it wasn't too bad. And uh, when I got a little bit older, then I went back in full time. And then during that period, too, we, Kyle took a sabbatical. We went to Egypt, I, another great experience for me, mm -hmm. you know, and I taught there at the American University in Cairo. Uh, again, you know, it wasn't the teaching. It was the, it was the way, it was the mechanism that allowed me to do these things. Um, when we came back, what? Um, I, I was working at the university, and we'd never planned to stay in Carbondale, but my husband Kyle was, he kept advancing in the university, up, you know, upping, and pretty soon he was at the very top, and he, he applied for different jobs, but we knew this was where we, we needed to be. And then when Mark was born, there was eight years between the two kids, uh, I, I went back to, um, I was in a junior college teaching, reading, another job I absolutely hated. <laughs> <laughs> and after a couple of years, I, I mean, I was called into the uh, uh, academic officer of the school, I don't, it was a dean, I don't remember what, it was a junior college, and she said, you know, you're to give all of your students passing grades. It was composition. I said, I don't think so. Yeah. I said, I'm not going to reward these kids when they don't show up for class, when they don't turn in their work. So, going back uh, to at that, that point, you're at like, that no, point, I'm not giving point, someone yeah. a get out of jail free card. And there, yeah, and, and at that point, it was like, you will do this, or, yeah. you know, so I said, here, yeah. I turned in my resignation, and I never went back. And Mark was almost three, and I never went back, and I, I never regretted. Mm -hmm. I, to this day, I was very happy raising the kids and, and very involved in their schools and and you know that that mm -hmm. part of life. Yeah. And Kyle was we had to do a lot of entertaining because of his position and stuff. So I was very happy to stay home, and you know that's it, that's it. We've done a lot of traveling. Since, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I was and always a lot more to do growing up as a kid. I mm -hmm. mean, Christmas holiday, we either went to Albuquerque or yes. that was our big trip yes. of the year. Yeah, yeah. Whether if we didn't go to New Mexico to see grandma, yeah. we would go to Mexico, we would we go to LA. It's those were our big trips, was Christmas. Yeah, yeah we travel, we try to, you know, mm -hmm. we try to um, Hawaii, very first time. And we try to, you know, expose them to a lot of different places, yeah. ideas and things. And, and uh, since Paige has come into our family, you know, we've done some pretty good trips. Yeah. You know, trips to Hawaii. and <laughs> Two times and I to have, Hawaii. I have a great idea. Kyle yeah. and I will celebrate our well, 50th wedding anniversary in four years. Okay. Lay That's it great. on us. <laughs> oh, really? Well, yeah. yeah. Let's ready? hear it. Breaking news. Yeah, I'm we thinking, don't know what this is. I'm so. thinking, don't tell him. Okay. <laughs> don't tell him. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking of a Mediterranean cruise. Okay. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. I mean, we, we decided after our last trip to Hawaii that it would be better if everybody uh, was on a ship. They could eat when they wanted. They mm -hmm. didn't have, you know, they could do what they wanted. Yeah. You know, it was just a, a better idea that I, I thought. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't know yet, but. I'll break it to him. I have four, year, I have four years to do this. <laughs> That's how most of the trips go, though, right? You plan them and you oh, just yeah. tell them, like, hey, yeah, we're yeah. going. Yep. So. We're going. We were supposed to go to India yeah. in November, and um, we bought a, a prepackage. It was a, a cruise, 
to uh, the Golden Triangle. We fly into Delhi and we do Jaipur, Agra, we go to the Taj Mahal, and then we would fly down to Mumbai and pick up the ship, and we would go to Goa and then to Sri Lanka and uh, Malaysia and uh, I don't even remember. And we'd end uh, uh, Singapore, and we okay. ended up in Bangkok. Very cool. And then a couple of weeks ago, actually about a couple of months ago, we got a letter from Viking, uh, and they were very worried about. about the conditions. What conditions? I don't know. Well, I don't know what they're seeing that we don't see. Right. But that they finally canceled the trip a couple of weeks ago. Bummer. And so they You're offered us a hundred. I mean, we could switch. You know, we could take any trip we wanted. They would let us. They gave us one hundred and ten percent for okay. another cruise. And we have already planned to go to Antarctica next year. And I thought, well, maybe we should do it now. But there was no, uh, there were no space. Oh, no space for this November. Okay. So we're going to Australia. Okay. And New Zealand. We'll be gone about three weeks. Very, you know, very in, fun. and we go in January. This coming Jan January, twenty twenty-five. Dallas. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's so I, I, before no I die. Trip. No, before that's I die. Uh, yeah, I, Mar Mar goes, Yeah, I think Hawaii's like every other year now. I think yeah. that's like. And I was like, Did your mom tell you that? He's like, No, no I think that's just like. Oh, yeah, right. That's you wish. that's what we do. And I'm like, oh. I guess we'll just have to go by ourselves. <laughs> oh, all. all right. <laughs> it's, um, what I wanted to do. When we were going to India, because I'd never been to Asia, and I, I think India is considered Eurasia, Singapore, Bangkok are surely Asian, and then Antarctica, the only thing was how do we get to um, Australia? Because I want to do all of the seven continents. I will have touched all seven of the continents. I'll do it before I die. You will. You know? I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to go to, to yeah. uh, India again. I do. I, I've got to go to India. So if maybe anyone next wants year. to go, just drop a comment. We'll get you on a trip with Jamie. So. Uh, yeah, if somebody wants to go, because he hates to go. Oh. I just got back from a, a European trip. Uh, it took me to, um, it was a, a pilgrimage. I felt I needed to get away. I felt that uh, this last year has been very difficult in our family. And I just... Kyle and I had taken a pilgrimage a couple years ago, and it was very nice. And I don't know, I, I think I'm looking for something, mm -hmm. trying to find something, I don't know. But the last year has been very, very difficult in our family. Mm -hmm. And so I told him, I said, I just, I just have to, to go. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. back to some of the places that we were because I enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. So I flew uh, with a friend to um, Lisbon. Portugal, and we spent five days in Portugal, which was absolutely beautiful. I would love, I, if I were 50, if I were 40, I'd be in Portugal. <laughs> to live. live there, yeah. yes. And um, if you're Catholic, you're aware of Fatima. And um, so that was the beginning of the tour. And then we went to Lourdes in southern France again and came back to Barcelona. The greatest <laughs> contribution, my contribution to our society, are two healthy men who work, who marry, who love, you know what I mean? Two healthy men that aren't on drugs and they aren't this and that and the other. And uh, to me, that's, it's not how much money you make. It's not how big your house is. Because, you know, as you approach the end of your life, what, money's not going to remember you? The house isn't going to remember you? It's your children. Yep. And what you have passed on to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Yep. And that's why... I think there's no greater, um, and people would probably disagree, but in my mind, there's no greater thing that you can do than to, if you are able, but to have a child and to raise them, to be good citizens of this country. We need a lot of good citizens of this country right now that we don't have. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's it. Really excited to have you back up here. Is there anything <laughs> on this trip that you want to check out in the city or anything that you had in mind that you wanted to do, that you wanted to share? No. I don't know Pittsburgh very well. <laughs> you know, we just came to see you guys, and give me, uh, we, we brought Paige's birthday gift. <laughs> and so... Drove all the way to... All the way <laughs> to her, her birthday <laughs> gifts. Uh, and that's really it. We just wanted to see you because we don't see you very often anymore, which is... <laughs> I mean, it's sad. I mean, when we were living in Davie, <clears throat> it was good. 
We had Mark with us all the time, and Matthew was three and a half hours away. And now we see Mark and Paige, what, twice a year, every six months? Uh, we'll start changing. Huh? We'll start changing more. Well, if you're Get some more flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. I mean, it's the holiday in December or, yep. Jan or November or December. And then usually in the summer we come mm -hmm. around birthday because everybody has a birthday in May, June, July, whatever. Yep. So, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, you find, too, that your children, I mean, they have their own lives now. You know, we'd, we, don't know their, we don't know your friends. We don't know, you know, what you... Whatever, you know, and it's and that and that only gets you get farther and farther apart the less often you see. You know. It's it's more difficult to relate. So I think we still relate pretty darn we still relate. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're very it. excited to spend the weekend with you and we're so glad that you you could have flown. We would have been we okay with you but flying, just... but but we're glad that you made a safe uh, drive up to yeah, spend a few days with us. Drive wasn't. I mean, it's it's a long drive, but yeah. it's a pretty drive. Yeah, and sometimes um, it's fine. Yeah. I just did not feel like dealing with the airports, and I know I they're going to be terribly crowded this weekend yeah. and next weekend. Yeah, but this was not a good time to fly. Yep. So we drove for sure. Good stuff. That's it. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mom. Thanks for tuning in to listen for another to another episode of the Perks and Paving. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Love Bye. you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>